वेलकम बैक यू वॉचिंग दिस वेरी स्पेशल शो ब्रॉडकास्ट वन प्रेजेंट डिस्ट्रप्टर्स consistently named as a leader in its space by various experts over the past few years entity data services is innovating and disrupting in its space while maintaining its leadership position i caught up with bob pry the ceo of entity data services to talk about the aggressive acquisition spree that they've been on uh, over the past few years what the future is looking like as well as their advice for those of you watching this interview about disrupting in your industries take a listen Thanks very much for taking the time to speak with us here on ET Now. Uh, it's always exciting to talk to uh, global majors like yourself that are so deeply involved in innovation and disruption. Uh, I want to start by talking about Entity, Entity Data Services as a global organization, as well as uh, Entity, the global company. Just give us a brief sense uh, of the kind of journey and the growth that you've seen. So my business, Entity Data Services, we're about fifty thousand people, forty countries. Mm -hmm. Um, and primarily we're an IT services company, so across infrastructure application BPO. Our parent company, NTT, is about a $106 billion company, 280,000 people, everything from telecommunications to um, Docomo, you know, a mobile phone company primarily in Japan, so, so a very wide disparate group of businesses, a true conglomerate. Sure. I want to talk about the India picture, and I understand you have about uh, 25,000 employees based in India. How crucial is India to you um, at Entity Data Services? What's the kind of vision, the kind of growth plan that you have for, for the domestic market? Okay. So I would say India has been a huge part of our business and company and industry for many, many years. My first trips date back to the late 90s. And um, over the last 10 years, we, we've done a number of acquisitions, so as we've grown, our population probably 10, 15 years ago would have been less than 1,000, today uh, 25,000. So, so rapid growth. India is a big part of every aspect of our business, from solutions, delivery, to transformation, to innovation. So there, it is in every pocket of what we do. So a huge part of our business, our culture, our people, and how we serve our clients. Mm -hmm. I want to talk about innovation. Mm -hmm. And innovation is crucial uh, to what the industry is doing, but it's also specifically you're deeply involved in what is happening by way of innovation and uh, disruption. Let's talk innovation. Okay. What does innovation mean to you? You know, it, it's really, it goes beyond an incremental change. It is how do you disrupt an industry? How do you change the way you deliver services for people around the world? How do you make life better for people in their communities? And people are always finding a new way of doing something dramatically different than the way we've historically done it. So if you think of efficiency, it's doing roughly the same thing at a different cost or productivity. Mm -hmm. Innovation is doing it completely differently. Mm -hmm. and, and that's a big part of what we're doing. We're seeing disruption in every aspect of our business and our clients' business across every industry geography. Innovation is driving that. Okay, can you be innovative without being disruptive? Possibly, that's a good question. Um, I, I think with innovation comes disruption though because the challenge that you have to really uh, beat is status quo. So when clients are making a decision, deciding do I want to do this with say NTT data, I'm, I'm competing most often with status quo. I'm representing change, and so part of that change comes risk, but also great reward and opportunity. Beyond just talking about you know innovation and disruption as terms, as words, do you think that uh, from what you've been seeing here in India, and you were talking about how you've been traveling to India now uh, over many years, do you think a lot of Indian companies are innovating and are disrupting no matter what industry they're in? You know, if you look at just the number of tech startups here, if you look at the number of people, so India today probably represents something 15 to 20 percent of all the digital um, new applications capabilities being delivered around the world are coming from India. If you look at innovation startups, sure. some of the biggest, most successful companies getting created in our industry are coming from India, um, and they're changing the way we as consumers benefit. Uh, and one thing that I definitely want to talk about is the availability of talent, which for your industry is extremely crucial. Are you happy with the kind of people that you're finding in India? 
In this country, you have four million jobs that are basically IT services related jobs. Um, 25 years ago, that would have been less than a million. So massive, I, I'm sorry, less than probably even half a million. So massive growth. But I don't have a single client, partner, supplier um, in the world where some of my constituents aren't Indian. Okay. So CFOs, CTOs, CIOs, heads of businesses in US and Western Europe and Asia Pacific, many of them are also Indian. So, so as a group of citizens, not just within this country, but around the world, it's probably one of the largest groups representing my industry, which is the IT services industry. So it's a big part of not only what we do here, but around the world. Okay, so then how would you respond to the fact that NASCOM, the IT industry body here in India, came out with a report that said only 20 to 25% of all students coming out of colleges today have the requisite skill sets for the jobs for which they're being hired, which forces then companies like yourself to extensively train on the job. You know, but I, I think we could probably say the same if they were coming out of schools in the U.S. and others. And, and so the question for me is, have we defined well enough what the skills and requirements are, okay. and then what can they develop within, you know, the undergraduate university program or graduate schools versus what we do? Sure. And, and it's not like you get perfectly trained people for everything you do. So part of the job of business is to fill in the gaps with training, developing, and additional skilling. Uh, besides the fact that you're present in so many countries across the world, you're also very active when it comes to m and And when you're doing m and you are working with different cultures. Right. How do you ensure that you're taking everyone along to ensure that there's that homogenous culture? The first part is you want an alignment of your values, your priorities, your principles, your objectives. And so you want to be well aligned. You want people that respect the culture of our company and we can respect the culture um, wherever they're coming from. And you want a shared vision of what are we trying to do together. And again, it's part of clients first, the foresight and the insight, and, and also the trust that we have of working together on behalf of our clients and our markets. And, and as long as you've got those fundamental values and those premises that by which we operate, you know, you can have a great acquisition of bringing great talent in and then accelerating whatever you think you're gonna do. Sure. Uh, reports suggesting that uh, you are quite actively interested and involved in uh, data uh, center uh, construction, uh, at least as far as your clients are concerned, uh, in the US, Europe, and APAC. So if you could talk to us about what your plans there are, and then specifically talk about India and what your plans are. So very similar, continuing to build infrastructure, which is computing environments, network environments. Because mm -hmm. what, what allows India to have 4 million people serving clients all over the world is great technology, great infrastructure, great network. It's sure. network and bandwidth that created so much of what is global delivery today. Mm -hmm. So now we're moving into a phase from what's called 4G to 5G. 5G opens up even bigger opportunities for us to drive the next wave of technology and integration. That uh, India may have largely been seen as a base for ADM workers, but now you're increasingly seen, uh, seeing more high value work really being done out of India. What's your own experience been? India represents almost every aspect of our career architecture. So from infrastructure apps and BPO, from entry level to senior executive. In fact, the head of my, all of my automation, my tooling for my infrastructure business is a man here named Niraj. He also has all my solution architects that build the solutions I'm selling to clients. So think of it not just as one narrow little scope, it is every aspect of everything we do. You were a member of the core team that met with Prime Minister Modi when he was in the U.S. last year, meeting with uh, you know, Indians in America, talking largely to uh, people who are in the tech space. Uh, if there may be one thing that you would like to see uh, uh, in India here by way of infrastructure, by way of uh, things really changing on the ground for the tech industry, what would it be? You know, he created an incredibly exciting vision of digital India. And, and digital India means you've got to build out the infrastructure that allows you to be digital. So I'd love to see you know, government and business work together to build that core infrastructure, not just the computing, the network, but also even the roads, the utilities, the facilities, because there's going to continue to be massive growth here, but you've got to plan and prepare for it. It's coming. It's either going to come where you're well prepared and organized, or it's going to come a little bit more chaotically. Sure. But it's coming. My last question to you then is really talking about what the future is looking like for your entity data services, uh, both globally, but then particularly talking about the India picture. What's on the plate that's exciting? So growth. 
you know, growing and, and moving from, I would say, my industry in the last 20 years has been too predicated on cost. So labor okay. arbitration, cost, productivity. This next wave is all around inter innovation, disruption, new technology, delivering services in a very different way. We're moving to what I would call an as-a-service model. Everything is as-a-service. So when you buy Uber, that's as-a-service. When you buy your, uh, your data plan, that's as-a-service. So moving to an outcome-based as-a-service in almost every aspect of our lives, that's where the technology landscape's going. And it creates great growth and great opportunities for people that can deliver on that premise. All right, Bob, thanks very much for your time here on ET right. Now. All right, thank you. Thank you. That's our show tonight. If you have any feedback for us, as always, we love hearing from you. Do get in touch. Leadersoftomorrowtimesgroup.com is our email ID. Get in touch with us on our Twitter handle. Sunanda underscore J is my personal Twitter handle. LOT underscore ET Now is our official Twitter handle. Get in touch with us on Facebook, Leaders of Tomorrow on ET Now. Thanks for watching. Have a good night.